Hello and welcome to the latest top 10 finds. This morning we're going to count down my top 10 Roman finds. Thank you very much for your kind comments on my previous videos and I hope you enjoy this one. Um, the Roman period, like most people, I'm fascinated by the Romans and the Roman period. Uh, the Romans were in Britain from about 43 AD to the early 5th century. There was plenty of contact before that um, in our Iron Age um, through trade and some limited diplomacy as well. And after the official end of the Roman Empire there were plenty of um, sub-Roman, still Romanized culture, um, but difficult to carry on without any monetary economy. Um, and it's interesting that uh, when the, the Saxons or the Anglo-Saxons, or the, the new people who um, settled in Britain after the end of the Roman Empire, when they saw the ruins of the Roman cities, they ascribed them as the work of giants. Um, and we didn't really uh, regain uh, the same material culture for almost a thousand years until the early post-medieval period. Um, so we were part of a huge common market which stretched all the way to Syria and Romania and Germany, North Africa um, and it's a fascinating cultural time. Um, very different people, very different culture to our own and yet they built the roads that we still use and they founded the cities that we still live in. Um, Roman London uh, was a, 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 a trading hub and uh, quite a large city in its day. Um, the Thames was much wider then uh, and probably shallower and you would get the Roman ships coming right up into the pool of London and offloading their cargoes from the whole empire. So let's start with our top ten. Um, they're all from the Thames foreshore apart from one so we'll start with the interloper and it's also the biggest. That is a huge, nearly complete, Roman tile. Although called a tile that would have been used more as a brick in a, in a construction. Uh, a very interesting story. I went to visit a very famous um, Roman villa in Sussex and walking the dogs uh, I went behind the villa site and there was a field there and they were cutting a drainage ditch and what did I see poking out of the edge but a huge Roman tile which must have originally come from the villa site and been discarded. Now this is called a tegula mamata so tegula meaning tile and mamata is basically this little rounded projection here which would have keyed in the mortar on the next stack. Um, Tegula mamata basically means tile with a boog on it um, and that's because of the shape of the projection. So quite a nice chunk, over two kilograms of Roman tile. Number 10. Okay the rest are all eyes only from the Thames foreshore. So number nine a very nice piece of Roman greyware, um, but slightly mysterious, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, it's got the typical lattice cross-hatching decoration there. Um, greyware produced throughout the Roman period in many different centres, uh, and was um, used for kitchen wares, storage wares, occasionally table wares, humble ware really. Um, this may come from the Alice Holt Forest site, which was a huge industrial scale pottery production which ran right through the Roman Empire uh, and is quite close to me. Um, check out my other video where we went exploring the waster dumps in the Alice Holt Forest. It's quite surreal because there is a, um, a bus stop there and basically in the middle of nowhere there's this bus stop and then where the moles have been digging around it bits of Roman greyware pottery are just scattered around so on the edge of the waster sites. But this was a bit mysterious because if you look at it, it has actually got glue down the edges. And I don't think that's an original fe um, feature. 
I think this has been found before, maybe in the Victorian period or maybe in the 1970s, and someone has attempted to glue it together and then it's been discarded twice in its lifetime. But I was happy to pick it up anyway, so that's number nine. Number eight, I mentioned the common market of the Roman Empire, and this is an amphora handle. Amphora, plural amphorae, uh, are the bulk um, transport containers of the Roman Empire, and I think we've all seen images of shipwrecks with row upon row of amphorae. So they would be transporting, you know, as far as Egypt and the Middle East, commonly coming to Britain, um, from Italy, from Spain, and they would have a variety of different products in them, olive oil, wine, fish paste, fish, um, some solid foods like seeds, stuff like that, maybe honey as well also, dates, date palms, um, and they're quite big boys, I mean they're, you know, empty, they would weigh about 25 kilograms quite often, and they'd have that curved base um, which would help you could roll them across a warehouse or a ship's deck anywhere. Here's a picture of one. And that's number eight. So, number seven, more tile. Uh, roller stamped hypercoursed tile. Um, it seems strange, but Britain was one of the few places that actually decorated their tiles. So you'd have a roller which would make this beautiful pattern. And that was purely used for keying in the mortar. It's not actually decoration because this would not be seen. It would be hidden in the wall space behind the plaster or in the cellar uh, where the hypercoursed, the hot air would rise and heat your floors and walls as well. So um, quite a posh building. Uh, first or second century AD for that little chunk of tile. Number six is a small piece of Roman glass. It's a handle from a small bottle, and there would have been another one I guess on the other side, so for oil or perfume. Um, Quite unusual to find Roman glass, because obviously being fragile, it doesn't survive as well as pottery. This was on a very low tide, um, and it's a hand-drawn handle. They there have found evidence of Roman glass making in London, but it could equally be an import as well. Uh, a bottle, something like this. This glass handle is quite small, so I'll do a little close-up video so you can see, hopefully, a little bit more detail. Sort of greenish glass. Uh, you can see where it's been eaten away by its years and years of burial. Now, what did you do if you're a Roman legionary or a Roman merchant and you're in Britannia? Well, you might have a game and use counters to gamble with. So this is a Roman gaming counter cut from the base of a little colour-coated pot. So they rather helpfully put guidelines on the base so you can cut a counter from it and you can imagine the Romans with their dice and their counters playing a variety of games. So that was a nice find. Moving on to number four is, I know it doesn't look much like it, but it is actually a hunting dog. So this little bit of pottery uh, comes from a hunt cup and you have dogs chasing hares, chasing deer round the pot. I'll show you a picture of a complete one. Uh, a 
and that is the head of a hunting dog from the Roman period, so that's a nice spine because I'm a bit of a dog fan. And this was made um, by trailing slip onto the surface of the pot and then given a colour coat with a contrasting colour in the side. So Roman pottery is very fine, that would have been a tableware for drinking. A little close up of the colour coated hunting dog. See his eye, his snout and his ears as he races around the pot after a hare. Okay, 10987654 number three. So this large chunk of pottery, that's the handle and then the body would go off like this, is from a mortarium, plural mortaria. Uh, and this is um, a kitchen ware that was used in the Roman Empire. It had grits on the inside and you'd use it to grind um, your paste and your sauces and it had a spout where they would be um, decanted from the mortarium. Um, they were also used for heating sauces as well because some are found with um, burning marks on the base. But what's beautiful about this is it has the maker's mark. Is it that way up? Yeah, there we are. So this was made in the Rhineland, in the Solaire region, by Vericundus. Now he's missing the first part of his name. Vericundus F, it says. Vericundus fake it. And then his thumbprint, amazingly. He used to generally, regularly put his thumbprint on his pottery as a sort of signature. Uh, and you can see the fingerprints of a Roman potter dating, I think it's the second, or was it the third century AD? So it's quite a large mortaria. Some people think they were made for bread dough making as well, but they would have been um, three quarters of a metre across some of these things. So a quite a big thing, and they were transported down the River Rhine across the channel and ended up in Roman London where it was broken, and I found it 1800 years later. Okay, now we're ready for the top two. Um, about five feet away from Vericundus's mortaria, I was very lucky to pick up a lovely piece of decorated Samian ware there. So you can see a palm tree and an archer, possibly hunting again, maybe hunting lions. Palm tree sort of speaks of Middle East. Uh, you've got an overlow decoration at the top, that sort of egg-shaped decoration there. So this is slip-coated. It would have been made in France or maybe Germany and traded across to Britain. Um, so this is quite high status, highly valued uh, ceramics for the table, beautifully decorated, although you do get a lot of plain Samian as well of course. So I was very happy to pick that up and include it as my number two. So what is more wonderful than finding a beautiful piece of decorated Samian. A very historic tile, not just any tile. Um, it's actually marked. So this actually relates to Britain. So you have very unusual to find um, a word on Roman items. But this was officially marked. So official tile works producing tiles for public buildings, for the forum, for the governor's palace, for the marketplace, stuff like that, and they would mark their tiles. So it's not complete, but it says there's a P missing, so it's P, P-R, B-R, which stands for Procuratores Provinciae Britanniae, the procurators or officials of the province of Britain. So this would have been a wooden stamp which they would have impressed onto the wet tile. You can see, I think there, the grain of the wood 
that you can see in the stamp uh, and these were produced in the uh, early 2nd century AD, so the early 100s um, in Roman London. And there are other people that stamp tiles, uh, legions sometimes stamp their tiles, the Classis Britannia, uh, which was the Roman fleet, uh, also produced stamped tiles. Um, but that was a beautiful find, very historic. Um, there are about 200 of these recorded uh, with different dyes, uh, and this die, there are eight examples uh, at the last count. So a wonderful piece of Roman London there. Right, well, we'll put together another top ten soon, but I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope you stay well, and we will see you soon. Thank you. Bye.